So I have another superposition problem. This one adds more complexity because of the current source. We're going to have to do a few more things to make that, uh, make that work. We have i sub s, we're going to call this 2, and we have v sub s 1. We're going to solve for v sub s 1 first. <clears throat> so we're going to start by redrawing the circuit and all of the resistances in the network. For the current source, when you do superposition, you open it. So now it's open circuit. This is 5, 10, 10, and 20 ohms here. And you see that these are now in series with one another, so we can redraw the circuit yet again. <clears throat> and it's going to look like that. Now this, this resistor here is going to be 30 ohms. 30 ohms, 20, and 5, well, 10. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so then we take these two and put them in parallel combination with one another. So 10 in parallel with 30 is going to be 300 divided by 10 plus 30, which is equal to 300 over 40, equal to 30 over 40, and then 15 over 2. And we can redraw the circuit yet again. So it's going to be voltage source connected with resistor, and then now we have a voltage divider. We're going to call this V1. Our target voltage is this one, by the way, V. And this is the V sub 1 version of it because it's the first source that we are solving for. So we have 15 seconds of a resistor there, and we have 5 ohms here. In order to solve for this, we take the voltage divider combination of that. So V1 is going to equal to Vs1 multiplied by 15 halves divided by 15 halves plus 5. We take advantage of the fact that the denom denominator is 2, and we multiply the 5 by that. So V1 is equal to Vs sub 1 multiplied by 15 over 2 divided by 15 over 2 plus 10 over 2. We can simplify that even further now that everything has the same denom denominator. Vs1 multiplied by 15, 15 plus 10. This gives us V1 equal to Vs1 multiplied by 15 over 25. If you divide each uh, the numerator and the denominator by 5, then you get V1 is equal to Vs1 multiplied by 3 over 5. Now, we evaluate for Vs1, which is equal to 20 volts. I don't know why I put 2 here. It should be 1. There we go. So this is going to be 20 multiplied by 3 over 5. 5 goes into 20 four times. So it's going to be 4 times 3. And finally, we get 12. 12 volts. So all that work just to find the first part of it. So now the next part is to handle the current source. So we're going to do the circuit again, but this time the voltage source is shunted. And we have our current source pointing upward at 4 amps. This was 5, 10, 10, and 20. Okay, we take advantage of the fact that these two are in parallel, so we can simplify our circuit. 5 in parallel with 10 is going to be 50 over 5 plus 10, which is equal to 50 over 15. And if you divide by 5, then you get 10 over 3. So we can redraw the circuit. And now the topology of the circuit changes to pi network. Just a little, little thing there, okay. So this is 10 thirds. This is 10, and then this is 20, <clears throat> 4 amps. Okay, now, uh, we still don't know exactly how this is, how the current is going to split. So this is 4 amps at this place, but then it splits there. Um, so what, what's better to do is to take this place and to exchange it for a Thevenin version of the circuit. So we want to go for a Norton, which is what it is now, to a Thevenin. And how you do that is you multiply the current source times the resistance, and that gives you the Thevenin voltage. So we have our resistance here, and 
and now this is the border line, the borders of the, oops, um, of the Thevenin voltage. So we have 4 amps multiplied by 20, that's going to give us 80 volts here, and the resistance stays the same. So the Thevenin resistance and, and the Norton um, resistance is the same. It just gets, it gets put from serial, uh, from parallel position to serial pos position. Okay, so then I have 10 ohms there, and I have my 10 over 3. So now this circuit is starting to look a little bit more simple. I can add these two in series, so I get 10 over thirds. 10 over, yeah, there we go, and we have 30 ohms there. And my Thevenin voltage. Okay, so now I can do a voltage divider on this, where this is going to be 80 volts, or Vs sub 2. Okay, so... That is v at v2 is equal to v s of 2 and then multiplied by 10 over 3 divided by 10 over 3 plus 30. Okay, now the denominators of these fractions are not common yet. I have to multiply this 30 by 3. So v sub 2 is equal to the power supply source multiplied by 10 over 10 plus, I have to multiply it by 3, so that gives me 90, which is equal to Vs2 multiplied by 10 over 100. And now it's starting to look a little bit better, divided by 10. Okay, now we just have to evaluate for Vs2 is equal to 80 volts, 80 volts, and we get V2 is equal to 80 volts over 10 which is equal to 8 volts. So V, the voltage of interest, is equal to V1 plus V2, which is equal to 12 volts plus 8 volts, and that gives us 20 volts. So we did all of that work just to get to here, 20 volts. And uh, we'll do a spice simulation next on this just to show um, our work and how the, um, how the uh, Norton to Thevenin um, circuit got exchanged and uh, get the final result to check our work. Thanks for stopping by, and I uh, hope you had a great day and that you got a lot out of this. See you next time.